Welcome to today's event, sponsored by the Great Lakes Addiction Technology Transfer Center, otherwise known as Great Lakes ATTC. Housed in Jane Addams College of Social Work, University of Illinois at Chicago, we proudly serve the Health and Human Services Region 5 states, which are Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio, and Wisconsin. Great Lakes ATTC is part of the ATTC Network, funded by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration under its Center for Substance Abuse Treatment arm. The network consists of 10 regional centers across the country, four national focus centers, and a national coordinating office. The ATTC Network exists to support CSAT's mission, to improve the health of the nation by bringing effective alcohol and drug treatment to every community. As a nationwide multidisciplinary resource, the ATTC Network serves to raise awareness of evidence-based and promising treatment and recovery practices, build skills to prepare the workforce to deliver state-of-the-art addiction treatments and recovery services, change practice by incorporating these new skills into everyday use for the purpose of improving addictions treatment and recovery outcomes. Great Lakes ATTC's mission Building bridges that foster the advancement of recovery emphasizes its role as a catalyst for the many intertwining relationships that are essential to achieving the most effective, efficient, and clinically sound treatment and recovery options. Our regional focus areas include Recovery-Oriented Systems of Care, otherwise known as ROSC, Trauma-Informed Care, Evidence-Based Practices, Capacity Building, Returning Veterans, and behavioral health and primary care integration. Before we begin, as a sponsored program of SAMHSA, we must evaluate the work that we do for our region. We have two forms to help accomplish that. First, we ask that you complete the consent form. The purpose of the form is to help Great Lakes ATTC in determining the impact of this program in serving the behavioral health field. By consenting, you agree to complete a short survey 30 days after the event. We want to know if you have applied or shared the information you received at the event. The second form is our post-evaluation. Please complete it at the end of the event. We always appreciate feedback to help us provide events that fit your needs. To learn more about Great Lakes ATTC or the ATTC Network, we encourage you to visit us at attcnetwork.org forward slash Great Lakes. Have a big mouth. Y'all can hear me though, right? Yes? All right. Okay. So um, thank you, Miss Lanetta, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, I was listening to her and I was like, man, whoever that chick is, I want to know her. She sounds really, really nice. Um, well, I am thrilled to be here this morning. I'm even more thrilled that you're here. Anybody go through traffic? I came from Indiana. Anybody? Mm, okay. Yeah. But I was on the road at 530. So, you know, I, I avoided a lot of that stuff. So um, IPV through a community lens, before I get into all of that, I'm going to tell you just a little something about me. That's me. Five years old. And at the age of five, of course, I was absolutely clueless about what life had in store for me. And right about this age, if you can imagine a little girl that innocent, sexually molested by the people in her family who were supposed to be there to protect her. The ones that were supposed to be there to keep her out of harm's way were the very ones who were violating her repeatedly. Not one person, not two, multiple. So now imagine this little girl growing up in that type of environment not knowing who to talk to, not knowing why this was happening, not knowing any of those things, but bringing that dysfunction into her relationships, 
not knowing why she was so angry all the time, not knowing why she was so defensive all the time, not knowing why she hated high school and everybody there. Nothing seemed to go right. I was always an outgoing child, so I needed a creative outlet. So that helped. So imagine this child growing up now, late teens, and finally could not take it anymore. I moved out of the house when I was 19 years old. I have a large family. There was a lot of us in the house, and it was just too, it was too crowded. I didn't feel like I had any space. So I moved out when I was 19 years old, haven't been back home since. But during that time, shortly thereafter, I lost it. And when I say I lost it, I mean I made the decision that I did not want to be here anymore. I'm tired. I don't know what's happening. I'm tired. The only thing I was trying to figure out in that moment is how I was going to do it. How am I going to do it? And I'm literally, I'm balled up on the floor in a corner trying to figure this out. I just don't want any pain. And there was a voice as clearly as you can hear my voice talking to you right now. There was a voice that said to me, Erica, you're better than this. Get up. I stood to my feet, and to this day, I can't name that voice, but I remember it. It wasn't a male voice, it wasn't a female voice, it just resonated with me. I stood up to my feet, and the very first word I remember coming to my mind was unstoppable. I chose, I made the decision to go and get some help. I started talking to a professional, I had no money. Thankfully, this place charged on a sliding scale. And for years, I had to work on me. I had to figure this thing out. Once I learned that it wasn't my fault, things got better. Because I couldn't figure out what it is that I did to deserve that. That was my mentality. So as I got better, I said, hey, I wonder if there's anybody else in the world going through this same thing. And I was petrified to talk about it. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. And I just, I didn't want people to see that part of me. But it wasn't until I revealed that part of me is when life got really good. Because as soon as I opened my mouth and started talking about it, there was a lot of Me Too conversations that started to happen. And I didn't feel so alone. I didn't feel like, oh my goodness, I am in this thing by myself. I can't tell you how many notes, emails, sidebar conversations I've had with women and men who said to me, because of what you said today, you have saved my life. That is my reward. That's why I do what it is that I do. And Lanetta told you a lot of accolades and stuff that you're reading in my bio. That that's good too, but I need you all to understand where that started, from where it came. There is a passion in me that will not die. It will not go away. It's always going to be here for as long as I can breathe. It's going to be here, and I've committed the rest of my life to it. There's a very unique twist to this story. So I have six sisters and four brothers. All of us didn't grow up in the same house. So within my family, there was this unique dynamic that was going on. There were some things you were encouraged to talk about. Others, no, no, uh-uh, oh, we're not going to talk about that now. But that was the stuff that I needed to talk about. The dynamics within my family is once I started talking about that stuff nobody wanted me to talk about, because in our community, you don't talk outside the house now, right? Once I started going public, with stuff that happened to me within my family, my family dynamics started to change. Some people stopped speaking to me, and I was okay with that. And I was like, well, is that all I had to do? Well, I've done that a long time ago. Some people stopped talking to me, but others grew closer to me. And what came out is every single woman in my family, four generations experienced the same thing. None of us knew it. But that 
experience drew us closer together. And I have no regrets. I had time for them. So when I say IPV through a community lens, the community that I grew up in, we were not wealthy. There were times when we really just didn't have a whole lot. But when you don't have a whole lot, that's when you get creative because you make something out of nothing. This is a passion for me. And this is my personal mission. So sometimes I look at that picture and I go, wow, if I could sit down with that little girl right now and just talk to her, there's so many things I'd say to her. One, I'd say, it's not your fault. No matter what it is that happens within this family, understand first and foremost, that's not your fault. So as a young adult, uh, by the way, what I didn't mention growing up, I witnessed a lot of violence within the family. I, I witnessed someone dragging my mother down the stairs by her hair. I've had guns pulled out on me. There's um, a lot of violence that I witnessed growing up. And I said, that's never gonna happen to me. But it did. Not once, but twice. So now I'm going, all right, so I've witnessed it as a child. Now I'm going through it as a young adult. This has to stop. And one of the reasons I went through it is I didn't even recognize what it was. Now that I recognize what it is, what the signs are, the different ways that people can be abused, I said, people need to know this. You know, there are some people being abused and don't even realize it. So we have to educate them on what it is that they're going through. So this is my personal mission. After I got out of that last IPV situation, oh, I, I, I was fierce. After I said, uh-uh, no, this is not going to happen to me again. So yeah, I produce a talk show. So I speak all over the world. I write a whole bunch of books. My latest book is, If You Leave, I Will Kill You, Getting Off the Beaten Path of IPV. Scheduled to be released next month. I can't stop if I try. If I go to sleep and say, hey, I'm not going to do this anymore, I'm like, who are you kidding? Cut it out. I have to do this. There's no other answer for me. So as we're going through this today, um, I wanted to give you that perspective of who it is that's standing in front of you. I am very open. And I want to say that as we're going through this today, you can talk to me, whether it's in front of everybody or on the side without the cameras and the microphones. I'm totally fine with that. But I am encouraging you to talk to me. I'd love to hear it.